Hello wrestling fans, the wrestling wizard here and welcome to another episode of Wiz Reviews Raw in what was an absolutely stacked show. Honestly, from top to bottom, this show had it all and I've just got to kick things off. The first thing that sort of sticks in my memory, of course, the Braun Strowman versus Bronson Reed. And you can't even call it a match. It was just a full on, all out brawl absolute carnage there were barricades getting knocked over i mean there was one point where bronson reed literally launched a fan and i'm not even making this up launched a fan into braun Strowman. braun Strowman tipped over a golf cart destroyed a camera they went through walls it was just absolutely ridiculous not to even mention the fact before this match even started if you can call it that they broke the top rope i mean it was carnage but just what you want to see, it took me back to the good old days. And I mean the true good old days of WWE in, of course, the Attitude Era. This had it all. But of course, the talk of the town post Monday Night Raw was not really this match. It was more Braun Strowman and his potential link to the Wyatt Six. Now, I was a little bit upset initially. I thought... We're not going to see Uncle Howdy. We're not going to see the Wyatt Six on Raw. And we're just going to get a sort of generic promo as they were reciting some of the previous Uncle Howdy journal. And I thought, oh, here we go. And then at the end, just absolutely out of nowhere, we got a QR code. And I thought, hang on a minute. we got to put those detective hats back on and we've got some serious solving to do. Now, as soon as that QR code appeared, I was absolutely rapid to my phone. As quick as a Brom Breaker spear, honestly, I was straight to it. And I wanted to solve this mystery. Now, the main reason why a lot of these mysteries, if you like, have been solved is down to you, the WWE fans. And I've seen a lot of really cool theories along the way, but I'm gonna go through the basic meat and bones of it all. I'll cover this in way more detail in a separate video. But essentially, we've got this QR code linking to an updated version of the journal, which was titled Frater, which in Latin, I believe, means brother, which is obviously something that got our tails wagging because we knew this was potentially a man that they were going to be targeting or potentially trying to recruit. And it read, The bond of a family is a cat of nine tails. Bound through suffering, we see you, brother. When you need us, we will be there. When you clicked multiple links on the journal, it would come up with multiple images, this being one of them, with, of course, the words Arben, which we know, not too hard to work this one out, is an anagram for the name Braun. Now, this is where it was starting to get really, really tasty because, of course, we were hot on the tails of a Braun Strowman link here. There was a text to accompany this image, which led to, I believe, a Bible passage. There were multiple puzzles, which we'll cover in a moment. And of course, this image of Bo Dallas looking at the TV set, which is from, I believe, a previous promo where Bo Dallas said, my life for you, with Uncle Heldy looking into his very eyes and going, there you are. Now, you literally have to have eagle eyes to work this one out. And I've only seen this through a link from a fan. But apparently, these are actually coordinates for a specific location named Brothers. Now, I'm slacking a little bit because there were actually a few puzzles. I didn't actually solve them all. But the one I did solve was really, really interesting. It read the words or spelt out when you solved it. Do you know why you're afraid when you're alone. Now I know what follows this. I do, I do. This has got to be, and I'm a bit of a movie nerd, bit of a film buff, and this has to be a link and quote to Sixth Sense. Has to be, has to be, surely it's gotta be. Might not be, but when you think of the white six, Sixth Sense, it kind of makes sense, it kind of ties in. There must be a connection. What do you think? Now, because I was being a little bit of a lazy git with the other puzzle, can you help me out? Let me know in the comments section what the other puzzle spells out because I didn't finish that one. Now, we did say way up in the lead up to the Uncle Howdy return, the debut of the Wyatt Six, that there was always going to be the potential for them to explore a storyline with Braun Strowman. 
and of course Alexa Bliss and the two by the way are connected as well there's so much history there but it certainly seems and this is just my take that the Wyatt Six aren't recruiting Braun Strowman I think they're just there for a brother or someone they believe to always be a brother and ally to the Wyatt Six they're going to be there when Braun needs them and Braun Strowman is definitely heard Uncle Howdy and the Wyatt Six because he did actually post on his social media nine middle fingers. Which of course we know is relevant because of the nine tails in of course the updated journal. So what does this mean moving forward? We're going to break down this in way more detail in another video. But I think at the moment it's just the Wyatt Six saying we got your back Braun. You're our brother and we are not going to let you suffer. We'll be there if things get tough. If you feel alone, there is always someone to call. There is always the possibility of Braun Strowman joining the way at six. Of course there is. But I have other ideas of that, which we'll come on to in another video. Now, this was an insanely packed WWE Raw. But one thing that definitely stood out to me was the CM Punk promo. Yes, we got what felt like a very chilling CM Punk, a very real CM Punk. Not the CM Punk that seems to be lately pandering to the WWE audience, just trying to lap up as much applause as he can get. This seemed like a CM Punk that means business against his little sister's wishes, against his wife's wishes, against the angel on his shoulder. He is going to go to that dark place to become the devil himself if he needs to be in his matchup against Drew McIntyre. He's going to put his life on the line. He's had a great career and he'd be happy to leave it at just that. And I thought this was the CM Punk that we've needed to see for a while. Potentially, when the time is right, I would love to see a transition into heel CM Punk, which for me is the real CM Punk. I want to see it in the future. Maybe over time we get to see that. But for the moment, let's just look forward to what surely is going to be the main event of Bad Blood in the Hell in a Cell match between Drew McIntyre and CM Punk. We got a match up between Sheamus and Pete Dunne, and I know that's not exactly gonna set the world alight, but I just love the fact that Sheamus is ribbing Pete Dunne at every opportunity, trying to get the crowd to chant Butch. And you know full well this is gonna catch on. The next WWE event I get to go to, I'm fully gonna be chanting Butch, because I didn't actually mind the name in the first place, to be honest with you, but mainly because Pete Dunne absolutely hates that. And I think this is going to be a little bit of a running joke throughout. Of course, Pete Dunne surprisingly got the victory by using a cricket bat, which is such an English way to get a victory. Kind of didn't mind it. I kind of digged it. I thought it was quite funny. But of course, this isn't the end of this rivalry. This is going to go on. Hopefully not for months and months and months. Hopefully not as long as Drew McIntyre and CM Bunk. But... I don't mind it, to be honest with you. It fills the time on the show, and it's got a place on the show. Now, one thing that really stood out to me was the Jey Uso Bron Breaker promo. What a promo. Now, those that say Jey Uso can't cut a promo, he delivered one this week. I thought he absolutely grilled Bron Breaker at the end with the line, your reign could be as short as your NFL career. Ouch. And that, of course, upset Bron Breaker. They had a scrap with Jey Uso getting the one up, which definitely means in the psychology of WWE reverse booking that Jey Uso is not going to capture the Intercontinental Championship. And what's the betting that the Judgment Day cost Jey Uso? I also like the part that Bron Breaker played in this promo as well, sort of trying to poke the bear with Jey Uso, saying that essentially he's nothing without his family. I thought that was a really, really good line. And Bron Breaker has surprised me quite a lot. He is a serious, credible act, not just in the ring, but on the mic. I really like Bron Breaker. I think he's warming on me, honestly. I wasn't a massive fan at first, but I like the way he's this sort of intellectual thinker. He's not just this big guy that tries to sound like a mean guy. He actually means business, backs up a lot of what he says. And of course, he's unbelievable in the ring as well. And that spear at the end of Raw... Oh my goodness, that was absolutely insane. The elevation, the height he got on that, the speed. Honestly, Bron Breaker, breath of fresh air, looking forward to the match. But sadly, I don't think things are going to end well for Jay Uso. Now, please, WWE, 
please don't split the New Day up. That would be heartbreaking because, of course, they had more teases on this week's episode of Monday Night Raw. Of course, Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods falling short and losing to the Judgment Day, losing that chance to capture the World Tag Team titles. And basically, in a nutshell, Xavier Woods blames Kofi Kingston. And I love how angry they got with the referee as well, saying, ref, you suck and all of that. But ultimately, Xavier Woods wants a change. It seems like he wants out. He's sick of this partnership with Kofi Kingston and he misses Big E. And if there's any member of the New Day that could pull off a Hill persona, it's Xavier Woods. Just the way he holds that microphone is already heelish. So I don't mind if this is the arc they go down. And you can guarantee this is something that they will be fully invested in because you know how much they do not want to break up peeling away the kayfabe. So it would be a shock to actually see it happen. It's safe to say there's trouble in paradise when it comes to the New Day. We also got a segment, a promo between Sami Zayn and Gunther with Ludwig Kaiser awkwardly lurking in the middle. And I say that because Sami Zayn very, very clearly wants this shot at Gunther's World Heavyweight Championship. And Gunther won't give it to him. And Gunther made out that there was a little bit of trouble, a little bit of friction between him and Kaiser, saying, is this something you need to tell me? And then turn the tables. And then, of course, Kaiser attacks Sami Zayn. Now, Gunther did tell Kaiser to leave Sami Zayn alone, but he ignored his commands, went after Sami Zayn, and Sami Zayn delivered the halluva kick basically deck the living daylights out of Ludwig Kaiser. So you can clearly see that they're planting the seeds for an eventual Ludwig Kaiser Gunther split. There's only so long that Kaiser can go on being Gunther's lackey, if you like. He's got so much potential and I think the fans are actually get massively behind him. And you saw from Bash at Berlin, and I know of course it was in Germany, so of course he's gonna get the ovation, how much fans are behind Kaiser. And I think over time, if booked correctly, he could be an absolute weapon within WWE. Now, it's quite nice to see Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair on Raw. If it was only for one night, of course, Bianca Belair taking on EO Sky and shockingly, EO Sky getting the win. I could literally watch these two wrestle all week, every day. There's so much talent. EO Sky is awesome. Bianca Belair, unquestionably, one of the best women's wrestlers of all time. But for EO Sky to get the win was quite shocking. Even though it was a cheeky little roll up, I don't mind it. I don't mind it at all. You can see over time, there's gonna be this tease friction between Jade and Bianca and I like it. And I do think there's a certain Miss Bliss that could potentially be getting involved down the line. Let's not forget that that Braun Strowman segment, of course in Link to Uncle Howdy and the Wyatt Six, was shortly after a Bianca Belair segment. The devil's in the detail in all of that, right? We also saw Natalia pick up a victory against Zoe Stark, which I'm pretty shocked about because it was only last week that Natalia, Zelina and Lyra defeated PFC. So what are they doing there when it comes to Pure Fusion Collective? I don't know, remains to be seen, but happy to see Natalia get the victory and you can see how happy she is since of course she signed her contract, re-signed should I say, with WWE. She's just happy to be there. And what an absolute workhorse. So of course we ended up closing the show with Damian Priest versus Dominic Mysterio. And predictably of course, Damian Priest getting the victory. And predictably of course, the Judgment Day or the new Judgment Day then delivering the beat down afterwards. And then predictably once more, Jey Uso coming out and trying to save the day before getting speared the living daylights out of by Bron breaker now i gotta be honest i'll be completely transparent i'm not personally a fan of any judgment day angle any new judgment day angle i don't care for it i care for finn balor i think he's a class act i care for damian priest and rhea ripley but i don't particularly care for them as a collective as the terror twins taking on the new judgment day i just i'm not that interested in it it just doesn't float my boat it's just not for me i'm not that invested in it and to be honest with you i didn't pay that much attention when it came to that because we knew what was going to happen. We knew where it was going to lead. I'd like to see Rhea Ripley and Damien Priest go off in a different direction. But this feud could go on forever. It really could. But what do you think? Are you a fan? 
Get down in the comments section, share your thoughts and opinions. And this is not taking anything away from them as performers. Like Liv has killed it as a heel. And Dominic Mysterio, one of the best heels of all time in my personal opinion. I'm just not really into the act as a whole. Just don't care. But what do you think? Get down in the comments section. Again, all your thoughts and opinions are welcome. And as always, it'd be very much appreciated if you could like the video, share the video, and even better, subscribe if you're new. And we'll catch you in the next one.